Hello friend, check out this amazing bug bounty report worth $27,000. Just click the link to read the blog post. It's an amazingly simple technique. Ooh, did you see what just happened? I think you have just been the victim of a cross-site request forgery and it seems that all your money is gone. But don't worry, in this video, we are going to dive deep into cross-site request forgery, so that you can hopefully score some bug bounties and make your money back. We will discuss various CSRF prevention techniques and how to bypass them. And at the end of this video, I will show you how you get free access to a CSRF cheat sheet containing everything discussed in this video. Let's first understand how CSRF works and then return to how our bank account got drained. In short, in cross-site request forgery, an attacker induces a user to perform actions they do not intend to perform. Let's consider a scenario with an attacker, a victim, and a target website. First, an attacker crafts, or forges, a request with an unintended user action to a website. Next, the attacker embeds the request into a hyperlink and sends it to visitors who may be logged into the site. When the victim clicks the link, Inadvertently, the forged request is sent to the target website. Finally, the website validates the request and performs the action with the victim's account. This can be a transfer of funds, a deletion of an account, or other unwanted scenarios. But wait, how is this possible? Why would the victim be logged in by clicking the link from another site, you may ask? Good question. The reason is that the browser attaches cookies to any request made to the target site, even if it is coming from a different origin. But what do we actually mean by origin and site? Let's first understand what an origin is. Two URIs have the same origin if they have the same scheme, same host, and same port. Let's have a look at a few examples. You can pause the video here to check if you can identify same and different origins. Did you get everything right? Now, let's understand what is meant by a site. In our context, we will define a site as the top level domain, plus one additional level of the domain name. This is also known as the TLD plus one. Additionally, when checking whether a request is same site or not, the URL scheme is also taken into account. Let's get back to our previous examples, but this time we check if we have same site requests. I encourage you to pause the video and try to figure out which scenarios are same site and which are cross site. How did you do this time? As you can see, all cross site requests are cross origin. However, not all cross origin requests are cross site. Now that we've covered the concepts of same site and same origin, Let's look into another fundamental security principle that plays a crucial role in web security, the same origin policy. The same origin policy is a security feature implemented by web browsers. It restricts websites from interacting with the data of another site. The SOP ensures that scripts running on pages from different origins can't interact with each other. Let's get back to the explanation of CSRF and understand it a bit deeper with the things we just covered. CSRF exploits the fact that browsers automatically include credentials, like cookies in requests, regardless of where they originate. This means an attacker can create a malicious request from their site that your browser sends with your credentials to another site where you're authenticated. The same origin policy doesn't stop the request itself, but does prevent the malicious site from reading the response or interacting with the data directly. These days, most developers are well aware of CSRF, and it is rare to find a site that does not have any CSRF protections in place. In this case, exploiting CSRF becomes all about bypassing these defenses. So let's dive into defenses against CSRF and their respective bypasses. We will discuss three major CSRF defenses and their bypasses. First off, let's start with CSRF tokens. A CSRF token is a unique, secret, and random value generated by the server and given to the client. It must be included in requests for sensitive actions, such as form submissions, to verify the request's legitimacy. 
If the token is missing or incorrect, the server rejects the request, ensuring only authorized actions are executed. Let's talk about some typical CSRF token validation issues. Some applications properly check the CSRF token for requests made with the POST method, but neglect to do so for requests using the GET method. By changing the request to use the GET method, an attacker can bypass the validation and successfully execute a CSRF attack. Some applications only validate the CSRF token if it is included in the request, but if the token is missing, they skip the validation entirely. To exploit this, an attacker can simply remove the parameter containing the token from the request. Another common flaw occurs when applications accept any valid token from a global pool, rather than ensuring it matches the user's session. In this case, an attacker can log in, get a valid token, and use it in a CSRF attack against another user. Some applications use a double submit method for CSRF protection, where the same token is sent in both a cookie and a request parameter. The application then checks if these two tokens match without keeping a record of issued tokens on the server. However, an attacker can exploit this if the site allows setting cookies. The attacker can create a fake token, set it as a cookie in the victim's browser, and use the same token in a request parameter to carry out a CSRF attack. The application will see the tokens match and accept the request. The next defense mechanism against CSRF attacks we will discuss are same-site cookies. Do you remember our discussion on same origin and same site earlier? This will be important now. Same site is another browser security mechanism that determines whether a cross-site request should include specific cookies. Developers can manually configure a restriction level for each cookie they set, giving them more control over when these cookies are used. To do this, they just have to include the same site attribute in the set cookie response header, along with their preferred value. There are currently three main supported SAM site values, strict, lax, and none. Let's understand the different security levels. If the same site cookie is set with strict, browsers won't send it in cross-site requests. Simply put, the cookie is only sent if the request is from the same site currently shown in the address bar. This is great for securing sensitive actions like modifying data or accessing restricted pages. However, it can impact usability if cross-site functionality is needed. The lack same site restrictions means that browsers send cookies in cross-site requests only if it's a GET request and the user clicked a link. This excludes cookies from POST requests, which are more vulnerable to CSRF attacks and from background requests like scripts or iframes. Since 2021, Chrome enforces LAX by default, making it the standard. The none attribute disables same site restrictions, allowing cookies to be sent with all requests to the issuing site. This is the default for most browsers, except Chrome. It's useful for third-party contexts, like tracking cookies where no sensitive data is involved. If you encounter a cookie set with same site none or with no explicit restrictions, it's worth investigating whether it's of any use. Additionally to same site none, a website should also add the secure attribute. This means the cookie will only be sent over secure, encrypted HTTPS connections. Otherwise, browsers will not accept the cookie and it won't be set. Now, let's have a look at bypasses for the lax security level. As we have seen before, servers sometimes accept both GET and POST requests, even for form submissions. If they use lax restrictions for session cookies, you might still perform a CSRF attack with a GET request. As long as the request is induced by the victim clicking a link, otherwise known as top-level navigation, the victim session cookie will be included. Even if a GET request isn't allowed, method spoofing can sometimes override the request method. For example, Symfony supports the method parameter in forms, which can change the request method used for routing. Cookies with lack same site restrictions usually aren't sent with cross-site POST requests, but there are exceptions. As mentioned earlier, when no same site attribute is set, Chrome applies lax restrictions by default. But there is a catch. Chrome doesn't apply this for the first 120 seconds on top-level POST requests to prevent breaking single sign-on mechanisms. 
This creates a two-minute vulnerability window for cross-site attacks. Timing an attack within this window can be impractical. However, if you can force the victim to get a new session cookie, like through an OAuth login, you can refresh their cookie before launching the main attack. You can then redirect the user back to your site to execute the CSRF attack. Finally, let's see what your options are if you face the same site attribute set to strict. As previously mentioned, in this case, browsers won't include it in cross-site requests. However, you might bypass this using a gadget that triggers a secondary request within the same site. One such gadget is a client-side redirect that uses attacker-controlled input, like URL parameters, to construct the redirect target. Browsers treat these as ordinary, same-site requests, including all site-related cookies despite restrictions. By manipulating this gadget, you can create a malicious secondary request, effectively bypassing same-site cookie restrictions. Another common bypass technique is via vulnerable sibling domains. As we have discussed previously, requests can be same-site, even if it's issued cross-origin. For example, if you find another subdomain that is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, then this will allow you to fully bypass the site-based defenses completely. In general, you want to look out for all vulnerabilities that enable you to execute arbitrary secondary requests in a sibling domain. The final defense mechanism against CSRF attacks we'll discuss is referrer-based validation. The HTTP referrer header shows the URL of the page that linked to the requested resource. Generally, this defense checks if the request came from the same domain as the application. However, this method is generally less effective than CSRF token validation. Sometimes applications validate the referrer header only when it is present in requests. In this situation, a simple attack is to drop the referrer header in the request. Other applications validate the referrer header in a way that's easy to bypass. For instance, if the site only checks that the domain in the referrer starts with the expected value, an attacker can exploit this by using their domain as a subdomain of the expected one. Similar bypasses can be found for checks if the referrer ends with the expected value or for regex evaluations. All right, bug bounty hunters. That wraps up our deep dive into CSRF attacks, defenses, and their bypasses. If you found this video helpful, then also check out this video where I deep dive into another classic vulnerability class, SQL injection. If you want to get access to the free CSRF cheat sheet, please check out the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy hunting.